Hi there, this is Mr. Evans. This video uh, is a video about international trade. Um, so it's part of the um, PESEL analysis we're conducting into the external environment. Um, and uh, international trade is considered uh, categorized by HO as part of the political um, environment. Of course, it's also a huge um, economic aspect as well. But nevertheless, um, international trade is going to provide a number of opportunities and pose a number of threats to UK businesses, which is the context in which we want to look at this. So international trade is the total value of exports and the total value of imports into a country. So exports, stuff that is made uh, in the UK but sold overseas. Imports, stuff that's made overseas but sold into the UK. Okay, the key thing to remember is, is, is not the direction of the, um, uh, of the goods, but the direction of the money. What I mean by that is that um, if a UK firm produces something in the UK and sells it to foreign com customers, the goods or the services go out, but the revenue earned from that, those sales come in. Whereas with goods that we import, of course, the goods and services come into the UK, but we're paying BMW or we're paying Apple or um, any of these other uh, foreign companies that, that produce many of the goods and services in the UK. When we buy them, the money leaves the UK economy. So this is a, a, an important aspect of the economy for the government to manage. And the government is going to have um, policies in relation to uh, international trade. <coughs> so when we're talking about international trade, we're talking about the total value of traded goods, i.e., um, physical products that are produced, cars, computers, um, ceramics, uh, cleaning products, you know, you name it. If you can see it, you can touch it, it's a good. Uh, plus the total value of traded services. So services are things that, you, uh, that are products that you can't touch, like an insurance policy or um, uh, some legal protection, for example. All of these are our services. Um, the UK is pretty good in services in that we um, actually have what we call a surplus, uh, whereby the UK sells more um, to people abroad than we actually import into the UK. We're a service-based economy, and then we've got lots of quite good, and quite good services, financial services, Premiership football, uh, films like the Harry Potter series that people abroad want to buy. However, um, we've lost a bit uh, the way a bit in terms of uh, production of goods. Many of the goods that we buy, the cars, the uh, computers, the electronics, um, many of those goods are produced in, in, in countries overseas, clothes, etc. So we actually have a, um, an overall deficit in terms of uh, goods. And overall, the UK runs a balance of uh, payments. Uh, deficit whereby we're importing more than we're exporting. Um, uh, it also considers uh, FDI, so foreign direct investment. When a UK firm goes and uh, invests in a factory overseas or Toyota come and build a factory in the UK, um, international trade would consider all of these um, uh, factors. So what are the advantages of international trade uh, for business? Well, um, you know, very similar to what we were talking about with the EU. It increases the number of customers that, that businesses are able to sell to. Um, businesses can gain from economies of scale as they start selling to more customers in countries overseas. They're going to be able to sell their products for more. Um, there's going to be increases in competitiveness, which I'll come back to as a disadvantage. But you know, if UK businesses are suddenly forced to compete with the very best German, American, Japanese companies, then they're going to have to stand on their own two feet. And that's going to improve British companies and help them to create a competitive advantage. It's just like if you're, I don't know, a tennis player and you want to become a better tennis player, you don't get better at tennis by playing worse players. You've got to play the best. It's the same in business. You want to be competing against the best if you're going to get better. Um, access to new technology. Okay, so um, by engaging in international trade, uh, businesses can learn more about production processes uh, overseas and, and, and sort of bring them back to the UK. Uh, we're going to get access to lower 
cost production environment. Uh, we're going to be able to gain better workers. I haven't actually got that on there, um, but uh, they are all uh, potentially advantages of international trade selling products overseas. Um, what about the disadvantages of international trade? Well, first of all, um, it might increase costs for business because we need to differentiate products for different markets. Different languages, different cultures require different specifications in terms of products, which can increase costs. Um, and there can be diseconomies of scale. So as an organisation grows, you know, think of an organisation like British Airways, which has got bases all over the world. They, you know, British Airways have got plenty of British employees, but also um, employees who speak different languages and who are based in different countries and different time zones. That's going to increase co um, communication costs. It's going to be more difficult to coordinate that workforce. And as a result, businesses uh, that are on a large scale selling internationally may suffer from diseconomies of scale. And of course, we get the disadvantages of increases in competition, like, you know, maybe the foreign businesses are just too good to compete against and um, uh, British companies are driven out of existence as a result. So, um, there are things that we want to consider in terms of international trade. In terms of government trade policy, the move has been generally from a protectionist stance, where um, the attitude of governments for uh, some time was that, you know, if someone's buying a car from Germany, they're not buying a car from the UK. Um, I mean, the cars are a more modern example than, than this, but um, over the last, and I'm talking, you know, 200, and to 150 years, we've, we've been moving from a protectionist stance where we're trying to stop uh, trade from taking place to more free trade, where countries specialise in what they're good at doing. In the UK particularly, it's like financial services um, and other services like I mentioned, premiership football, film industry, music. You know, countries are encouraged to specialise in what they're good at and trade with other countries what they're not so good at. So, always use the example of a banana. It's not, you know, the UK has not got the climate to grow bananas, so if we want them, we need to trade with other people. So, um, <clears throat> what are examples of, of policies that the government uh, follows? Well, first of all, joining the EU was um, a movement to increase trade with our European neighbours, uh, reduce protectionism, move to free trade. And you could argue that actually, in that respect, joining the EU was very successful. The EU are now um, uh, EU countries are now our biggest customers, um, and we export the most to those countries. Joining the World Trade Organization, which is an organization that aims to promote free trade by reducing protectionism, that's an example of a, um, a move towards free trade. Um, reducing barriers to trade, tariffs and quotas with uh, other countries, not just uh, non-EU ones, ex-Commonwealth countries, um, trying to build um, uh, uh, new trade deals with other countries, um, which is actually a reason put forward by many people for leaving the EU. Uh, the UK is somewhat restricted um, uh, with the, the agreements that we have as part of being a member of the EU, with the trade deals we can negotiate with countries like Brazil, Russia, India, China, those BRIC countries that are developing. Um, and, um, and, and yeah, so uh, the more we can negotiate trade deals with those sorts of countries, uh, the more opportunities it should present for business. So what opportunities are there as a result of um, international trade? Well, uh, bus obviously businesses can look to increase sales to overseas countries. Maybe they could look to manufacture in lower cost environments overseas. Um, they can import cheaper raw materials. So, you know, you would categorise the opportunities presented um, by uh, international traders potentially earning more revenue um, or reducing costs, um, what, you know, and reducing costs. What about the threats? Well, uh, we've talked about uh, why there might be increased competition from overseas competitors and why that might be uh, not such a good thing. Uh, what about the impact of Brexit on sales to EU countries? If um, I'm recording this in August 2017, if the negotiations in terms of Brexit don't go favourably for the UK, 
um, what will be the impact on those companies that do a lot of trade with France, with Ireland, with um, uh, Germany. Um, and that's very much up in the air at the moment. Um, and what about the impact, again, um, quite a volatile time when I'm recording this in terms of international trade. Donald Trump, during his election campaign, talked a lot about bringing jobs back to America um, and, uh, you know, building a wall and uh, retreating from NAFTA, the trade agreement that, that there is um, with Canada and Mexico. Um, and there's a certain amount, there's a great amount of uncertainty in the environment at the in the you know, world economy at the moment about what impact that you know America is the world's largest economy. If it reduces its trading with other nations, that reduces their wealth, and um, uh, it could be pr could prove problematic for businesses uh, across the world. So interesting times in terms of international trade. Really important for you to keep an eye on this one um, and, and follow this in the news because um, the more you can give examples of up-to-date um, uh, you know, businesses, what they're doing and how they're managing uh, these challenges in the environment, uh, the better grade you'll probably end up with uh, at the end of the course.